Hello my Juicy Co Creators, Lilu here. I'm on beautiful Kauai on the islands of Hawaii. Amazing Kauai all the way up north. It's such a beautiful island here. And today I'm with um, Richard Diamond that is definitely one of the people that is very, very connected on the island. Richard has been living here for over 13 years. And um, I feel so blessed to be sitting here right now next to him in this very powerful um, place, power spot, isn't yes, it? This is, is a special yes. area. Yes, there are many spots like this on the island. This is definitely one of them. Um, the energy of Kauai is extraordinary. We were just talking earlier about how so many people look so much younger here. Yes? <laughs> yeah. um, and it's because of the nature of the land, the nature of the wind, the sun, and really the nature of the community. Yeah. And so we really feel, people really feel connected with one another and people are very much into gratitude. Mm. I, I, I also love and really want to share with you uh, Kauai in this interview and in other, in, in other interviews too because it's like a, a living goddess. There's really something special about this island that you're very yourself connected to. Um, but I want to really thank you because of all the connections and all the juiciness that have unfolded since we've been in contact. There's like this huge vortex of energy that's been created. And for me, this is really co-creation at its best. And I could tell you that this is the Juicy Living Tour taking full vision where the community is fully stepping in and want to share their passion and their message and people offering from accommodation to car. All the support that I've ever dreamt of for the Juicy Tour has happened here on this island and I feel there's something really magic. There's a, really an alignment with the with yes. the true divine nature that we have within ourselves. Yes. Is that what drawn you here? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, I was drawn here by that energetic. I didn't know at the time exactly how powerful it would be. But living here this time for 13 years, it's ex grown and expanded. And the island, although it's a small island in some ways, in other ways it's really very big. The other day I was thinking Kauai is like, for me it's like bigger than Australia because you keep learning more and seeing more. It's like an interdimensional um, uh, play, play field. It's like there's so much going on. Um, it's just beautiful. The energy of the goddess here, I have had so many experiences with the, um, the birthing. There's a lot of birthing, wonderful birthing energy here. Uh, women come here to have children and they have home births and that's going on. And, and just here where I'm, we're sitting on these rocks, uh, we were talking about it the other day. It's like you really feel a sense of the goddess and how the energy of male, female is working in harmony together here. And so uh, a woman feels more in sense with her own femininity and yet a male will feel more in tune with his own maleness. And it's just like an expansive thing. And the kinds of uh, things that go on here, I run something called the Muse Letter. It's been around for 13 years. And the energy really comes through there. You see all these people making connections. It's really beautiful to see. Yeah, there's really a sense of community. but. Tell us about your story, because it hasn't really been that way. You went through huge depression. Should I tell you about the Richard Diamond story, how that occurred? The Richard Diamond story, yes. yes so that, okay. Uh, basically, what happened many years ago, I was going through a really dark time. And at the time, this was around 1995, and I was in Seattle. And I was sitting with someone who was doing some therapy, and he said, well, feel your feelings, feel your burdens, you know, whatever it is. And I was feeling so burdened with my life and the fact that I couldn't handle anything then. And I literally slumped to the floor. And the next thing I knew, I was like falling through the earth. And I was falling and falling and falling and falling. And finally, I splashed into something. And it's like I didn't know what it was, but it was like some kind of orange liquid and there was like a luminescence in this liquid. And I was like in this like environment and I felt happy. And it's like, I couldn't quite understand what was happening. And then I had the realization that what happened was that I splashed into lava. I had literally gone into the center of the planet, splashed into lava, and in lava, like nothing can live in lava except itself, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like lava. And, but the other thing that can be in lava is consciousness. So it was like my ego was burned away, all my burdens were burned away, and I was there in the lava 
in consciousness. And I was happy in that moment. So that in itself was a kind of a revelation. I then came out of that experience into my body and I was still feeling a lot of, you know, I was still in a, a, the dark night of the soul, but I had an experience which showed me something. And it was about two weeks later that I was walking down the streets of Seattle and um, I, I had this revelation that at the center of the planet was a giant diamond the size of our moon that had literally been gestated for billions and billions of years that there was a great pressure of lava, hundreds of miles of lava that was putting pressure upon this diamond and it was just coming into the fullness of its, its own self-awareness. So the diamond itself was coming into self-awareness of itself. It was really interesting and um, that, was, that was the revelation and that was like, I felt very exhilarated around all this and I told some friends about it. And it was about a month later I got a call from some friends that said check out Scientific American magazine, you know, science magazine. So I checked it out and it turns out that there were these um, two scientists that were theorizing that at the center of our planet was a giant crystal the size of our moon that was actually rotating at a different rate of rotation than the planet. And that was amazing. And since then, even though at that point I still had a lot to go through in terms of my own process, the diamond became a kind of a point of reference that I would use as I was dealing with my uh, dark night of the soul, I guess you would call it. There was a point at which I couldn't have one thought that was positive. Everything in my environment was like dark, it was like, like negative. And, but in the distance, like if you envisioned a sky that was a gray sky and there was this one point of light, that was like the diamond. And there were moments when I could go inside the diamond and when I went inside the diamond, there was no thought at all. There was no positive or negative, there was just nothing. And that was a kind of refuge just to get away from this horrendous darkness that I was experiencing. And there were a lot of things that unfolded from that, but basically um, I, I came to Kauai in 1998. I left a little around 1999. I left to go back to Florida for about six weeks and then somehow was able to find my way back here and I was still going through a lot of my own process. And because of the experience that I had, my whole social network was just fractured. I had no friends, I, I just didn't have anything going because I was not very clear in my own mind. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do? How am I going to get like a network of friends again? I didn't know how I was going to get a social network. And the message that I got was, <clears throat> just stay in the center of the diamond. So in essence, that was my prayer and my meditation to just stay in the center of the diamond. And that was around the year 2002 that that happened. Shortly after that, the newsletter got started. And then here I am today, uh, there's still doing it. I'm still in the center of the diamond, but I'm like, the newsletter is like a hub of information all over the island. It's got 2,000 people who are registered on the newsletter, mainly on Kauai. So you're definitely this social butterfly now and we were just walking yesterday around Kauai, you know, different places on Kappa and <laughs> everybody recognized Richard and there's this huge light that you emanate and so are other people around you. There's been basically, as I was saying to you the other day, I was saved by the light. That's the only way I can put it. Um, I'm not a walk-in. But it's almost like I am a walk-in. It's like whatever reborn. it was, it's like I was reborn, reborn in the light. <clears throat> and because of that, uh, and, and by grace, I'm on this incredible island. And so many people, I feel, and I'm not the only one that feels that Kauai is one of the great, great lights on the planet. And so the brightness of this island is just radiating out to the whole planet, you know, whether it's through people writing stories, whether it's through an interview like this one, in so many different ways. And I know you're going to be talking to other people that in their own way will be expressing their light. Um, I've had experiences here like on this mountain. I don't know if you want to hear about this great mountain on the island. Yes. Is that good? Yeah. There's a mountain here called, uh, it's called Sleeping Giant Mountain. 
and it's a very well-known mountain. It's, a, it's not the largest mountain or the tallest mountain on the island, but there's just something about it that's really beautiful. People, I know people that have literally gone up the mountain to scatter ashes of their loved ones who have died, and they scatter ashes from the top of this mountain. And what happened was a few years ago on Easter, I was feeling physically sort of low and still going through my thing. And I thought, I'm really out of shape. I really need to get in shape. So I started going up this mountain. And I started on Easter and for the next six months, I went up this mountain every day. It takes about an hour to go up. And I did, every day I would go out and go on this mountain and people started recognizing me as this guy that goes up the mountain every day <laughs> and uh, <laughs> one day I was coming down from the mountain and I remember thinking to myself you don't really feel like sleeping giant and the mountain seemed to shake its head no I'm not sleeping giant and then the other name it had another name called no no which is a hawaiian name which i honor that but for me in relationship to the mountain the mountain said i have another name and i said what was it and i felt these letters formulating in my mind and it spelled out a s h a asha and i said oh you're asha and at that it's like the gates of like the mist cleared and it's like open sesame it's like the doors open and i was bonded to this mountain that night i went home and i did a search on the internet for asha and i discovered that asha was a word that was a very special word in a language spoken by a spiritual teacher who lived three thousand years ago whose name was zoroaster and there are still followers of Zoroaster on the planet today, who's a very powerful leader. He lived a thousand years before Jesus. And um, that's such an amazing story. The word that was, has, as was used by Zoroaster had three main meanings. It meant, it meant that which embraces the changing nature of truth, so that at one point in your life what seems true at another point of your life doesn't seem true anymore so it's like truth seems to change and so what asha is is that which embraces the changing nature of all of that so that's one meaning it's like asha is the awareness out of which we all unfold the second meaning of asha is it's like your life principle, the life force that animates us. It's like if you take away this life force, this life uh, power, we just like drop like, you know, like ragdolls, you know, because that's the second meaning of Asha. The third meaning of Asha is one's walk with God. So that's the meaning of Asha that was given to me before I even knew what it was. And then for the next several years, I went up this mountain hundreds of times. I went up Asha hundreds of times. And during this process of going up the mountain and just not doing anything special, I would find a, some places that were like real vortexes for me. I found myself changing. I, what happened is that my perceptions started changing. I started understanding things about um, nature and about reality and about what's real and what's not real. One of the most powerful things that I discovered while going up this mountain was the relationship between male and female. The mountain itself feels very feminine to me. It's a very powerful female goddess presence. Yet the spot that I would go up every day when I went up there is very rocky, very male energy very male and it's a very special spot and through the process of going up there I began to realize that this male energy was unfolding coming out of the feminine and I realized that a man a man loves to feel his power you know there's something we we love to feel it but to maximize your power, there needs to be a balancing with the feminine. And when you're in balance and harmony with the feminine, you, you, can, you feel so powerful, you're not intimidated by the feminine. There's not any trip about whether I can be a male around feminine. It's just a balance and a harmony, and there's a real beauty in that. Now, if that energetic of that power breaks off from the feminine and you sort of go your own way, it's like, I'm powerful, I'm a man, and I'm just going to go whatever I want and just do that, and you're broken off, 
you become an abomination. And a sign to me of like an abomination of male power is like GMOs, genetically modified foods. Um, genetic manipulation where you try to create other kinds of beings through genetic manipulation. Um, basically, when a male breaks off and becomes an abomination, he uses his mind to literally, he thinks he can create better than the universe that's, that's already created and in harmony and, and growing. And in his, in his attempt to create a better universe, he creates a nightmarish universe that ultimately will implode upon itself, and it's suicidal. Everyone dies. You know, um, the wars and all these, the, some of the, the, the horrendous things that are happening on the planet today are a function of that split, that separation. And when you have a reunion, when you have a reconnection of the male and female, there's a sanity unfolds and you start doing things in a way that's supporting life and enhancing things and, and smiling at babies and, and like that. And so that's what the mountain uh, uh, taught me. Tell us how we can really get into communication with, um, I was really interested when you start talking about the, the rocks, you know, and the mountain, and, and your relation, when you go to waterfalls, and there's something else that you see that some of us don't see. Tell us how this works. How do you enter in communication? How is it for you? Well, this is juicy. <laughs> it's all about love. You know, it's all about love. When I see rocks, well, especially on the mountain, there's this one place I go to that are, are rocks. And there's, one, there's this one particular spot that's like this big rock. It looks like a big head of a lion. And the lion looks like its head is bowed down and its hands are in prayer position. And so it looks like a lion, literally, that's praying. So, I don't know if you've ever read Narnia, a lot of people have read Narnia, it's just, and, and in this book it's a children's fantasy, and in this book there's a character named Aslan, and Aslan is a lion, and he's like a Christ figure, he's a figure that helps the children make it through all these harrowing adventures. So I call this rock Aslan, the praying rock. And it, I was going up the mountain like for two years before I saw this particular configuration and then when I saw this configuration some incredible thing happened for me I became aware it was like I became aware of a being that became totally aware of its power it's like one day you wake up and you realize wow I am like so powerful and in that same moment of coming aware of this power, this being became aware of a power that was a thousand million times greater than it was. And it was so impressed at the awareness of this great power in the cosmos, all it could do is go down in prayer. It's like, this is like way amazing. And it sort of goes down in prayer and it's like, thank you very much. And like, that taught me humility. Like to me, that was humility is the recognition of your realization of your place in the universe. So, in the one hand, we are like wondrous, powerful, incredible, creative beings. On the other hand, we're just one of many. And so we're all of that creation. And that was such a wonderful awareness that I, I walk actually with that awareness now uh, in my life because it's, it's a kind of, um, it's the way that you enter heaven. You know, you can't take your ego into heaven. You can't take your ego into these higher places, these more exalted places that we love so much. And so, when you're in the stance of just being reverent, it's like you can go anywhere. You can go anywhere in the universe. And that's, that's, how, that's how we can be in relationship to nature, so nature can speak to us? Yeah, so following up on that, and that was like my initiation into the power of the rock. When I see like rocks like this, every rock is like a being. And I can literally, f all these rocks used to be lava, right? They used to be flowing in lava. And they're not now, they're just like rocks, but they are lava rocks and they have the energy of the, the planet in them. There's a power, there's a mana, there's, a, there's an intensity in these rocks that are very, very wonderful. And if you approach it from the right way, like I like to walk on the rocks in my bare feet, 
And when I'm walking in my bare feet, it's like my feet are kissing the rocks. And the rocks are kissing my feet. And so I'm very sure-footed on these rocks. You know, it's like there's like a love that happens and an energy exchange that happens. And sometimes I'll lay on the rocks and feel the energy of the rocks all through my body. And there, it's like an energy of cleansing. You could literally feel the... the um, lava is like, it's sort of like, looks almost, if you look at it under a microscope, like the, the rocks, it looks almost like a beehive. And it's like, I have a visualization where this, this look like a beehive is like taking out all the impurities of my body, of my psyche, and it's just a purification thing that I just do naturally. So I love to lie on like warm rocks especially and you literally feel the energy coming up your body, coming into your spine, coming into your being and you feel enlivened and you feel empowered and it's just it's all about love and, and of course the Hawaiians um, there's just so much around the power of the rocks they would be the hay owls with these rocks that they would gather and, and have special ceremonies there and even though these rocks are not like a hay out, in a sense for me it is. So every time I come down here and I don't just see like individual rocks, it's nice to be with individual rocks, I see a kind of a gestalt, I see a kind of a, a collective consciousness of the being of the planet. And just seeing that changes you. And it's changed me and it continues to change me because there's just a deepening effect that happens and it, it, it ties into your relationships with yourself and with the people around here because on one level or another people are so powerfully affected by nature and they honor nature. I discovered something incredible in the mountain. One day I was on the mountain and I was looking out at nature and all of a sudden it's like I felt so much love coming to me from nature it was like, it was like, it filled me and it almost like, almost burst through my body with all this love. And I felt like a king, I felt like royalty. And I realized that when you really tune into nature and really communicate, nature loves us so much and honors us as royalty. We're like all royalty and when you, when you don't see that or you're unwilling to see that and you start treating nature like without respect it's like you're you're putting yourself on the level of just like you know below an ant you know it's like if people really got it and they really got the incredible love that's just waiting for them to be connected with in nature their whole being would change and they would no longer hate themselves inside right so many people don't love themselves that would just like dissolve away because all there is is just a kind of flowing relationship of love that's happening between you and nature once you realize and you decide to enter into a state of reverence with nature. So I love that. We have to really engage and this is a relationship. It's calling nature and, and starting to live that. I love also how you name name what seems like things and you make them alive and also the, the whole Kawaii becomes a goddess. Tell us about your relationship with this goddess. Who is she? Well, Actually, she's showing up on the map when we look at it from the yeah, sky. Yeah, yeah uh, it's sort of fun. Most people, even people who have lived here for a long time, haven't really seen this. But if you look at an overhead of Kawaii, you can actually see a profile of the goddess in the island. And it's really, when I first saw it, it was like a revelation. And the way you see it, it's like there's a river on the east called the Wailua River and where the Wailua River runs into the ocean, that's like the eye of the goddess. And if you go down to a town called Lihue, and right below Lihue there's a, a ring of mountains called the, I think it's called the Hori Head Ridge Mountains and it's in the form of a smile. And then go up a little bit further from there and you come to a harbor called the Willy Willy Harbor. And that's a peninsula that juts out into the ocean a little bit. That's the nose. So you have the eye and the nose and the mouth. If you go up a little bit further, you come to Kapa'a, which is a sweet little town a little bit south of Princeville. And that's the third eye. And then if you go up further, um, past a town called Kilauea and into Princeville, that's the crown chakra. 
And so that's the crown chakra of the island, and her hair goes all the way down from Hanalei down through Kikaha is the hair, and you can see the hair. And the most exciting part to me of this for me is when you look at the very center of the island, that's where the Mount Waiali Ali is, which is one of the wettest spots on the planet. That's the pineal gland. Our pineal gland is located right at the center of our heads, and a lot of people feel the pineal gland is a gateway into higher dimensions, right? And so here you're looking at this island, and you're literally seeing the goddess and the pineal gland, and it's just like, it's just beautiful. And Waiali Ali, all these rivers are spawned, you know, come from Waiali Ali. It's like seven navigable rivers on the island. And so you have conversations with this goddess on a daily basis? Yes. <laughs> um, what does she tell you? What does she? What is she showing you? She, what does? What has she shown you? <laughs> <laughs> one thing she has shown me. Um, one thing she said to me is that, Richard, you need to know that you are so loved. You are so loved. And in that love, that's where you're going to gain everything that you've always wanted in your life. And this is not a matter of being self-effacing. Like if someone gives you a gift, receive the gift. Don't say, oh, I'm not going to take it because it's somehow it's better for me not to take it. You want to just receive the love and just keep receiving it because she loves, her love is infinite. Look at what we've done to Mother Earth, right? It's just horrendous what's going on in so many ways. And in spite of that, she just keeps on giving. She keeps on giving and she keeps on giving because her, her givingness, her creativeness is eternal. I mean, the goddess, she creates stars. You know, the stars come out of, out of this creativity. And so she's like always, there's always this gratitude. It's a, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so grateful for this communication with you um, in the gratitude it goes on forever it just deepens more and more and more and so every day I have this deepening gratitude for being here for having this relationship for those that have eyes to see and you can see this beautiful energy there that's just wanting to give more and more and more love you can have a life that's so enhanced and so remarkable and you feel so good. I've gone through, I've gone through a, a pretty intense dark night in my life, and now it's like total reversal, uh, in a really good way. I've never felt so solid in myself. So if if you would just be in this space right now, where she would speak through you, if Kawaii would speak through you at this moment, what would she say right now to people listening? She'd say, what she would say, and what she said to me, is the light is here. There's a light of love. There's a great light that's spreading out all over the planet right now. It's very, very powerful. Not everyone sees it. Uh, not everyone will recognize it. There are many people that do see it. There's many more people that are seeing it. Basically, the message I get through the mound, through the energy of Kauai, is that relax don't worry about anything. It uh, might seem really weird. It might seem really dark in places. It might seem, so, you know, strange things are happening on the planet. But the thing to know is that everything is okay. And ultimately, there's nothing but light. And eternally, and this is something that's really so important for me, and what the message that I continually get, is that when all is said and done, there's only expanding love. There's eternity of love expanding forever. That's where we came from and that's where we're coming to. And here on this plane of consciousness, and Kauai is, God, when I, when I look at Kauai, like in my mind, I see a nova. It's like, it's like a, a nova that's unfolding. And, and, you know, Diamond wasn't my given name. I, I take Diamond on because I love the idea of a diamond star. And in a sense, the Earth itself, Mother Earth, is giving birth to a diamond star. It's giving birth out of, the, out of everything that's happening, is coming a light that's so extraordinary. And 
it's really good to relax and allow yourself to come into this into this warmth into this lovingness and insist that to to really see that and then that seeing it your life can be transformed you don't need to worry anymore it really everything is okay this was such a juicy moment richard thank you so much <laughs> We all, many of us here, feel like we're uh, spokesmen and spokeswomen. Um, uh, it's not like I need to be on any kind of like soapbox or get up and talk in front of people or anything like that because the, the, the truth of what's occurring is so, so big and so wondrous that when you can turn to that truth and be with that, it's like Abraham calls it the vortex. It's like being in the center of well-being and out of that comes this incredible creativity and also incredible compassion and the willingness and the, the ability to be with people in a whole different way that's creative and will support the planet and all of us to come into a whole new dimension of being where, where and, and there's no end to it. Love is not boring, you know, lack of war and conflict in the way we see on the planet is, is not boring. It's like the most exciting thing that I can imagine. And eternity is not boring. It's like an endless, you can't really put words to it, but it's like an endless expansion of exhilaration and love that, that our minds, our hearts can understand it. That's really important to know. Our hearts can, un the ego can't really understand this, but our hearts can. And so we just stay in our heart and we just allow ourselves to move into this magnificent expansion of being in love that is basically goes on forever. It's really wonderful to be sitting here talking with you. So I'm really honored. Thank you, Libby. Thank you for creating this moment, co-creating this moment. Thank you for the co-creation of this moment. I'm like really honored and grateful in this, in this perfect, place where I love to come all the time on these rocks. Thank you. And that's what exactly the tour, the Juicy Tour is all about. And I love sharing these beautiful stories with everybody watching right now. I know you feel blessed and take all this love that, that was just being shared and all this information into your heart. And that should, should that bring light and yeah. joy and fun and, uh, we're sending you a lot, a lot of love and light from this beautiful place of Kauai. Lots of love and light. Aloha. Aloha.